Good morning. Uh, we just completed a CEO forum. Alan Fortenberry and the organization of Beaver Water District was our host this morning. And we had a wonderful CEO forum. And I'm in the room here with Lowell Grisham and Alan Fortenberry. And one of the things we've been wanting to do is we all got to benefit from John Lewis and his great leadership. Uh, John passed uh, a few years ago. And we thought we would interview a series of people, two of the first today, on what made John Lewis a great leader. And uh, that's what we're going to do this morning. The things I, that I look back on and, and think of John that uh, impacted me in regard to why do I think he was a good leader uh, are two things, primarily his patience. Uh, he had a lot of patience with me. Uh, he did have patience. And I, I think that he had a lot of patience with lots of folks. Yeah. And he was very thoughtful uh, through that patience then, uh, his thoughtful nature. And he had excellent, excellent Skills. I mean, he could he could get me to do things uh, almost unknowingly get me to do things simply by the way that he communicated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he, he led people uh, through a direction. The man had tremendous vision, and he kept he kept telling me in my position uh, it wasn't the day to day things that I should. Mainly concern myself with it, it's what's out five years from now, ten mm. years from now, twenty years from now. His leadership, he just looked out uh, and he dreamed, and that's what he tried to teach me. And, uh, he got you to think bigger, kind of more, a little yes. more about, more boldly, maybe about the future of the organization. Absolutely. Uh, you know, what position, financial position, personnel position, what what position would you have to be in to hang out? when you get out there 20 years. He was an enormous leader to me, and uh, I, uh, I miss him, and I miss the things that, uh, that he shared with me. His ideas of, of education uh, and what he felt people should know and should feel. Uh, he didn't push his ideas necessarily on someone, but like I say, with his communication skills, he could get you headed in a direction that uh, he could get his way. That's great. Thank you, Alan. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. I think one of the things that made John unique is he had an incredible ability to vision. He was open, creative, and always thinking. And he was also able to connect things beautifully, to connect people. Mm -hmm. So if you came with an idea, um, he would begin to think it and think it in the future. And then he could bring other people to it. He was a maven. And, uh, and connect folks together to make, uh, make dreams come true. Mm -hmm. I remember um, a new parishioner came into my office and um, she was talking about a place that was where the, the cracks were falling through for people at the, the lowest end of our society, for, for homeless folks. Yeah. Uh, we had something for people, a place for people to stay overnight, but we had no resources for people during the day who might want to uh, look for a job. Um, and the long and short of it was um, she had an idea. First person I sent her to, John Lewis. John said, you need to make a business plan. I told her how to do that. You need to talk to this person, this person, this person. She talked to those people. She put together a business plan. Within a few months, she had a, a vision that made sense, and John had networked her. She brought that to our vestry, and in one meeting, they endorsed uh, the, the start of what sounds Seven Hills Homeless Center. And um, it was John's being able to hear something, imagine it several years from now, and give her the steps that she needed to make that happen. And, and that become a great organization. Yeah. Thank you for your leadership, your church's leadership in that regard. Oh, it, it's, it's been great. It's been fun. Uh, he, was, he was our... Uh, Vestry Senior Warden, which is the lead um, lay person in our system. And he said, uh, you know, this church, I wish I could do an invitation on it. Oh, this church has been here for 150 years. I wonder what it's going to look like in another 150 years. We need a 150-year plan. <laughs> so he started, he started us working on thinking about a 150-year plan. So we did a, an imaginary exercise. Um, think of yourself in 50 years. Think of yourself in 150 years. 
uh, coming on a Sunday morning. What do you see? How are people dressed? How did they get here? What are they excited about? And we started imagining what it would be like to be in our church, to be our community, uh, way, way down the line. And it began to help us think about what now we're just planning, uh, which is a, a form of, uh, of current expansion to meet uh, uh, what we need to meet in the next 15 to 20 years. All right.